from history. Welcome to another episode of Weirdos from History, where we dive deep into the lives of history's most peculiar personas, with a twist of lemon and a dash of bitters. Today we're unraveling the enigma wrapped in a riddle encased in a mystery and wearing a Kleenex box for shoes. Howard Hughes, a man who soared the skies only to nosedive into the depths of eccentric seclusion. Buckle up, as this tale takes more twists than a pretzel in a tornado. Once upon a time, in the bustling city of Houston, Texas, on December 24th, 1905, a baby boy was born into the lap of luxury, thanks to his father's knack for drilling more than just for oil in the business world. Little did the world know, this bundle of joy named Howard Robard Hughes Jr. would grow up to be anything but ordinary. With a silver spoon in his mouth and an oil rig in his backyard, Hughes was set for life. But why settle for a fortune when you can build an empire? Leaving the hallowed halls of academia in the dust, Hughes decided that college was too mainstream for a man of his ambitions. Instead, he set his sights on the glitzy world of Hollywood and the boundless skies of aviation. A true Renaissance man, Hughes dabbled in filmmaking and plane making with the enthusiasm of a kid in a candy store, albeit a very wealthy kid with a penchant for high stakes. Hollywood beckoned, and Hughes answered the call with the subtlety of a sledgehammer. His production of Hell's Angels was less a movie and more an aerial extravaganza that left accountants weeping and audiences gasping. Not content with merely shocking the financial department, Hughes then turned his attention to The Outlaw, starring Jane Russell. Ever the innovator, Hughes engineered a bra for Russell that became the stuff of legend, though Russell herself opted for comfort over couture, leaving Hughes' career as a lingerie designer a bust. But Hughes was not a man to be grounded. His love affair with aviation saw him breaking records and nearly breaking his neck. The 1946 crash of the XF-11 reconnaissance aircraft left him with injuries that would haunt him for life, turning him into a veritable pharmacy on legs, yet even in the face of adversity, Hughes's spirit soared higher than his planes. Hughes's personal life read like a who's who of Hollywood's golden era, with a romantic roster that would make even Casanova blush. From Catherine Hepburn to Ava Gardner, Hughes loved them all but married few. His marriage to Jean Peters was as enigmatic as the man himself, filled with directives and distance. Enter the Spruce Goose, a plane so large it's a wonder it didn't have its own zip code. Hughes' ambition took flight in the form of the H-4 Hercules, a testament to his refusal to think small. Though it barely flew, it soared in the annals of aviation history, much like Hughes's reputation. As the years flew by, Hughes' eccentricities took center stage. His reclusiveness became the stuff of legend, living in darkened hotel rooms, shunning the touch of human hands, and conducting business in the nude, shielded only by the modesty of a tissue box. His obsession with ice station Zebra knew no bounds as he turned KLS-TV into his personal movie theater, ensuring that no one would disturb his cinematic marathons. Old Howie, the high-flying Hughes, decided next to dip a toe into the chilly waters of Cold War espionage. In a caper known as Project Jennifer, Hughes mustered his might and money to hoist a submerged Soviet submarine from her saltwater slumber. This business baron bet his bucks on a big boat named the Glomar Explorer, built to beguile the Russians and bring up balmy secrets from the briny deep. A crane craftily concealed in the hull was Hughes's harebrained homage to a literal fishing expedition. But alas, as the laborious lift of the lost Soviet submarine took place, the bulky behemoth balked and broke apart. Hughes was then left holding, not a full haul of hidden history, but rather a tantalizing two-piece trinket. Hughes's life was a symphony of directives, from the meticulous to the mundane. His memos were legendary, detailing everything from the proper way to open a can of peaches to the exact specifications of his sandwiches. A control freak with a capital C, Hughes left nothing to chance except perhaps his will. 
Ah, the will, the piece de resistance of Hughes' saga. His death in 1976 sparked a legal battle royale over his estate with a will as elusive as the man himself. The mystery of Hughes's final wishes became a legal labyrinth, leaving lawyers and relatives scratching their heads and checking their pockets for a hidden inheritance. And there you have it, folks, the whirlwind life of Howard Hughes, a man who flew too close to the sun but never got his wings singed. If you enjoyed this high-flying tale of eccentricity and excess, don't forget to like, subscribe, or leave a comment. Who knows? Your suggestion might just be the next weirdo from history we explore. Until then, keep your feet on the ground and your tissue boxes handy.